Uh, today I would like to talk about the interconnection between two processing platforms. So the, the C-Brain platform developed at uh, the MNI in, uh, in Montreal and the virtual imaging platform developed at CNRS in, in France. So basically these two platforms can execute pipelines on, on clusters. So C-Brain can run on the uh, Canadian grid and the VIP can run on the European grid infrastructure. And uh, we were wondering how these two platforms could uh, interoperate to exchange files, to have a common authentication system, and also to exchange pipelines. So the, the goal is quite uh, technical. Um, the main motivations for that are first, of course, to be able to access more data, because we could uh, exchange files between the platforms, to access more applications, uh, Everybody who had ported a pipeline to a, to a cluster knows that uh, it's kind of uh, costly. I mean, it takes time to do this and to debug that. So we'd like to be able to exchange the, these ported pipelines. And of course, to share also computing resources. Uh, even if uh, each of the platforms have substantial amounts of computing resources, we also know that sometimes uh, we have queuing, queuing times, etc. So that would be the, the main motivations. Another motivation, which is uh, a bit more prospective, uh, I will say a few words about that uh, in, in conclusion, is to be able to reproduce studies between these two platforms. Uh, each of these two platforms have whole machineries to run workflows, to trace data sets, etc. So ideally, we'd like to be able to take one experiment from one platform and to run the same experiment on the other platform just to reproduce the results. So the main developments that we've done so far uh, that I will just describe in the next slides, are first uh, a common authentication with Mozilla Persona, then uh, synchronized data directories between the two storage systems, and finally, uh, well, while this is still in progress, but we've started to work on the exchange of applications as virtual disk images between the platforms. So just to say a few, word, a few words about C-Brain first. So C-Brain is a processing platform that you can access at, at this URL here. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a web platform uh, that includes, that offers the possibility to upload files, to download results, uh, to do visualization, and to run pipelines on the, on the Canadian grid infrastructure, as I was saying before. It's a, a fully operational platform with an operational team behind it and uh, uh, quite a large community of, uh, of users as well. VIP on the other side uh, plays uh, mostly, has mostly the, the same functions. Uh, you can access it from here. It's a web portal too where you can uh, have access to a few applications uh, representing pipelines. Uh, we have applications in uh, simulations, so cancer therapy simulation, uh, image simulation too and also a couple of uh, neural image analysis pipelines, uh, in particular some FSL tools and FreeSurfer. It's connected to the European grid infrastructure, uh, which offers uh, a network of computing centers worldwide, and it's also in, in full operation since a few years with a, a, a large user community. So the, the first step that we, we took to uh, try to uh, connect these two platforms is to uh, to, to look for a system for common authentication so that users don't have to, to have two passwords or two, even two uh, different authentication systems. We've reviewed a couple of them, including X509 certificates, including SAML, including OpenID, and we chose uh, Mozilla Persona. Uh, why? Because it's, uh, it's uh, quite lightweight. I mean, it can be implemented with a couple of uh, I think three or four JavaScript lines on the client side, and also just a few, a few, a few code lines on the on the server side. And also compared to the existing solutions, it's it's supposed to to respect user pri users' privacy. It's also an open solution, so we thought that in a research context that was a, quite a good technology. So basically, the, the system is. Though I'm, I'm not going to enter all the details, the the system works as follows. Um, when, when a user wants to, to connect to a, to a website, so it will basically connect with his or her email address. Uh, first, uh, the system would uh, generate a key pair on the, in, the, in the user's browser. 
Uh, and then this, the, the public key is validated, is signed actually by the email provider of the user. So if, the, if your email provider supports this technology, for instance Google or Yahoo, uh, then the, the email provider will directly sign it, otherwise uh, Mozilla provides a, a, a fallback service. Once this is done, then the user has the, the possibility to sign assertions uh, to connect to the, to the platforms, Seabrain and VIP in our, in our case. Of course, this is all done in the back end. And then the platform can just go to the email provider to verify these assertions, to verify that the signature is, is uh, actually valid. So, well, uh, as I was saying before, there are a couple of arguments uh, which uh, led us to show this, and uh, I encourage you to uh, try this if you have similar uh, single si sign-on uh, uh, issues on, on web platforms. The second thing that we, we have developed is uh, file synchronization through, for, for data sharing. So this turned out actually quite easy because uh, Seabrain is, is really based on uh, standard technologies, so including SSH for, uh, for data storage. So the only thing that we had to develop is a, um, a file synchronization mechanism between uh, an SSH data server and a European grid infrastructure. So we, we really chose, that, that was really a choice to, uh, to, to do file synchronization uh, because mainly it can, it can mask data transfers and compared to solutions where you would transfer files on demand when you, when you want, for instance, to import data from Seabrain to, uh, to VIP, uh, you would first need to transfer your data, to wait for it, and then to launch your pipeline. Here, you can just define a shared data directory you drop data there, it's synchronized in the weekend, and when you come uh, on, on, on Monday or whenever, then you, you have your, your file synchronized. So th that was really a, a design decision. The synchronization itself, is, it's just based on comparison of checksums, nothing really fancy. The final thing that uh, I, wa I, wanted, I would like to talk about is the exchange of pipelines uh, between the two platforms. So. Actually, before diving into the implementation, the, the first thing that we, um, we've realized is if we exchange pipelines across platforms, then very rapidly we'll, we'll go into this kind of problems uh, of reproducibility issues between the two platforms. Uh, I think we, we all know that uh, uh, when we execute a pipeline on, on different operating systems or in general on, on different environments, we may have different results. And uh, we didn't want to increase the mess by offering the possibility to, to transfer pipelines, and then we, we have, I mean, that, that was a, a concern for us. So if you want to know more about this, you can go to the poster uh, number 39. But basically what we, uh, what we decided to go for, for this interoperability work, is to, to transfer virtual machines between the two platforms. So, uh, when, when this is completely finished, we'll have a repository of virtual appliances that we could exchange between the two platforms. But the first step for that was to actually enable these platforms to use virtual machines to execute their tasks. So that's what we've done in Seabrain. So administrators can now declare disk images in Seabrain. Uh, and then when users come to execute their tasks, on a, on, they, can, they can specify a, a, a particular disk image where these tasks will be executed and then Seabrain takes care of, of de deploying these virtual machines either on, a, on the clusters of a Compute Canada, also on clouds, we have an interface to, to OpenStack to execute the tasks and to stop the VMs when, when this is all done. So th that's it for the, the developments. Uh, as I was mentioning in the introduction, our future work, uh, for our future work, we, we identified a, a use case for using this to uh, facilitate the reproducibility of uh, experiments. So we'd, li we'd like to use this machinery so that um, uh, experiments that I run by users on one of the platforms can be then uh, published, can be associated with an identifier, we thought of uh, digital object identifiers, and then this identifier could be referred in a paper, for instance, or a report, and then, uh, we could have a, an, an, a, another person like, accessing this identifier, resolving it, and then he would be redirected to the, to the, to the platform that was used to, to produce that. The, the rationale behind that is that these platforms actually have all the bells and whistles to enable this reproducibility story, but this should just be uh, enabled. 
Finally, this, uh, so this user could uh, request the access to, to the experiment and he may or may not have the, the rights to, to reproduce it there. So then with the technologies that I've, I've just presented, uh, we could then redirect the user to another platform, VIP in this case, to, uh, to help him reproduce the, the pipeline that was executed in, in Seabrain in this example. So if you're interested in, in this uh, use case and to do it, then please come to me. I would love to, to talk with you. So that's all I had for today, so thanks. Um, did you actually run experiments on both clusters in these virtual machines to assure that with that there you get the same results or is there still some changes or is that not tested? So we, we, we haven't run extensive experiments in, in virtual machines, but we, we, we were able to identify that these differences actually come from software libraries. So with the same software library, this fixes the, the, difference, the, the differences. So by extension. The software library is not so far downstream that the virtual machine uses it as well, which then might introduce its problems. In the experiments we've done, it's uh, the libmat included in glibc. So you would really have to install another operating system to be able to use it. All right, excellent, thanks. Is there much of a performance hit based on running it in the virtual environment as opposed to the na native environment? Sorry, what was the performance hit running it virtually as opposed to natively on those deployed architectures? Yeah, I guess that the current figures are a couple of percent, so two, three percent of, uh, of performance loss. So I think for, for the users, it doesn't really matter. For the, from the pers perspective of a computing center, of course, it's, uh, it can be a lot, but yeah. Okay, so we'll...